have talked about Big Ten realignment for a while, okay? And nobody was a fan of the legends and leaders, right, when they tried to realign that garbage. Um, Would you be open to no divisions? No divisions, right? Because no, because think about it, and I'm going to persuade you right off the bat, all right? So divisions exist, right, for not necessarily for, like, like, standing wise like it's not to compete right like nobody gives a shit if like who plays in the finals i guess in college it's for competitiveness isn't it because like you you don't want the same teams playing every every year you know or well you do with the the, with the nature of college and rivalries and stuff like that but what if there was a system, and, I, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. There was a, uh, an article in The Athletic. I don't know if you saw this today. It was just, just today. But um, uh, the Big Ten currently has a nine-game conference schedule that includes three cross-division games, right? So, like, Michigan State, for example, played Northwestern. Um, who else did they play? Northwestern. Did they play Minnesota? No. Purdue. Purdue and Nebraska, right? Yeah. Purdue and Nebraska. Yep. Those were their three cross. Um, and then the rest of them, they just play the East. Uh, the Big Ten has discussed dropping to eight games in 2023 so they can create matchups with the Pac-12 and the ACC, which with they have created sort of – they they're framing it as the alliance. You know, we got a name. The alliance against the SEC. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Um so, so what the, the interesting part, though, is that now there are discussions about the Big Ten ending divisional play. So, basically, in this situation, what you would have is you would have every school would play three annual opponents, okay? Like, just that is normal, right? So, for Michigan State, for example, I would imagine that it would be Penn State, Michigan, and Indiana, I would imagine those would be I, – I mean, it, the third one you could kind of give or take. But I'm pretty sure that Indiana has more history there. Anyway, so you'd have you'd have three, three opponents every year, but then you'd cycle through the rest of them, the other ten, every other year. So, like, you'd play um, some uh, – what is it? Two years on, two years off. So every two years you'd switch opponents. It, I, it, I guess we could add some consistency. So, would you be open to that? Would that be would that be better? Would that not be better than our current system and take the top 2 from the standings and just have them play in the finals? Yeah, a- I absolutely. I the Big 10 West is a joke. Um <laughs> let's all be real with ourselves. It's it's put MSU, put Penn State, put Michigan, put Ohio State. Those four teams consistently would win that. Wisconsin would give them a run for their money every once in a while. But, I mean, let's be real. The East is significantly better. And it's just, it's such a disproportionate amount of of talent just in one area. Um, And and I like the idea of no divisions because once you try and realign things, you risk risk something happening down the line where, let's say, Minnesota becomes a powerhouse. And then Michigan State fades. So then there's more imbalance. Just make it no divisions. That that's all you got to do. No divisions. Um, build build in those games against rivals like Michigan State would be, uh, Penn State, Indiana, and, and Michigan, and probably eh, Ohio State's not technically a rival. But if we're doing just three games, those are three technically MSU's rivals. So build in build in those those games that are consistent. Have them cycle through the rest, and then we have more parity in the conference. It's just I, I don't know. To me, that's how you do it, and it should be that way right now. Yeah. Cause I mean you're you're right. It's not competitive. And like like would would you have wanted to see? I would have watched any game pitting Michigan against any other Big East or Big Ten East team than I would yeah. have seen them against Iowa. I mean yeah, you absolutely. know like that was just garbage. That was terrible. Can you imagine Michigan and Ohio State in a Big Ten title game? That would have been great. I mean that would have sucked. Insane. That would have and. So the interesting thing, though, too, is that now fans bring up because and, – and this goes into the tradition with the Michigan whole thing. And I know that both of us are kind of MSU guys, right? But, like, people people get stuck on this thing that where the last game of the, of the regular season must be the end-all, be-all, right? 
Like, and, and I hate this, and I think that everyone needs to get away from it, right? Because, like, you, and, and, and this year was a perfect example, okay? So Georgia and Alabama play each other in the SEC title game. All right, they don't play at all. They're not in the same division. They don't play at all during the regular season. But they go into the SEC ch- title game, and Alabama wins. But at, but Georgia, damn good team, right? We know that they're a damn good team. They compete with every other team. They could beat any other team. All right, you put them in the college football playoff. They get to the finals. They play Alabama again. Who comes out on top? It's Georgia. You play that game ten ten times. Alabama wins five, Georgia wins five. Like, that's just how even it looked, right? Like, you, it was just, just based on the context of everything. But you have these people, especially people who are, who are just so distraught and ingrained with Michigan's history. You have a lot of people who are very much caught on the idea that, like, if we somehow got rid of that system say there's a say there's a situation down the line where like Michigan and Ohio State which tends to be the case because they're both insanely historic programs who have in just just so much recruiting power and you're going to have a system where Michigan wins the Big 10 title game but Ohio State ends up or or uh I'm sorry, Michigan wins the regular season matchup, but Ohio State wins the Big Ten. And, like, that almost, to them, makes the regular season irrelevant, you know? And I'm like, yeah, but no. Like, you know? like I would argue that bowl season is the playoffs, and especially when it expands, because it will expand, has already made the play the, the regular season more irrelevant. It, uh it just brings more meaning to a game. I mean, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, like that's a possible Big Twelve matchup, and their fans wouldn't complain about that. That would just, that would be stellar no. to view. I do get we. I have heard that argument, but I just think the way college football is heading, um, traditions are. Has it mattered? Heading. Has it ever mattered anyway? You know, like you got games in December that I'm like watching, and I'm like, what if we turned half those bowl games into? playoffs you know like what if we turned those games from exhibition matchups to something you know like watching a bowl game is like hitting play now on madden like i'm not interested in doing that you know yeah especially in 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 bowls like the cheese it bowl <laughs> and those it's 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 gotten a bit ridiculous i do like bowl season i'm definitely pro lots of bowls but um I mean, in terms of the traditionalist argument, I th- I just think that bowls have already done away with the regular season uh, more than more than any other change to anything could do. Uh, yeah, and right, and again, like the like you mentioned, the things changing. You got NIL coming in here, so like yeah, 